everybody, and welcome to this edition of Health Made Simple. I'm Donna Woods of Photonic Health, and today my special guest is Dr. Aaron Holder. Dr. Aaron hails from Hawaii. She is a 2002 University of Florida veterinary medicine graduate. She specializes in small animals and also exotics and horses, I believe. No, not horses. No I horses. Just, no, no horses. I just love horses. I love, love horses. Horrible. I help with right. some horses, but not a horse expert. Small, small <laughs> animals and, and exotics. Yeah. Um, she, uh, her her journey actually as a holistic vet began at the Chi University, which is right up the road from us, and um, she is certified in a lot of certifications. People, <laughs> she's got a certification veterinary mm -hmm. acupuncture, uh, traditional Chinese herbal medicine, which is amazing. Chinese Tui Na, Chinese uh, traditional Chinese food therapy therapy, animal Reiki, bioenergetic testing, and she holds special interest in ozone and sodium exorbate therapy. And she is also uh, continuing her certification in healing touch therapy. So that's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to say up front right away, um, Dr. Aaron um, had a fabulous practice here in Florida, and she grew to quite a large um, holistic practice, and it's still up and running with Thriving. the same principles that she started it with, correct? Thriving. Thriving. Florida wild, as a matter of fact, and um, her current pursuit and her current passion is writing teaching and recruiting um, other veterinarians to the holistic side of things. So welcome. We are so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you. Yes. It's so unusual for me to not talk about horses because it's such an integral part of our, our business model. However, small animals is also a uh, a big part of it. So today we're going to talk about the little guys. <laughs> yes. Um, so how did you get from, how did you get from graduating vet college, vet medicine, becoming a veterinarian and moving into the holistic arena? Yeah. Um, as going through vet school, you see that most of the work we do is symptom suppression. And we constantly are talking about the multiple side effects of pharmaceuticals. And we're taught and bought by pharmaceutical companies and pet food industry. And I knew early on, it just wasn't going to be good enough for me. It wasn't going to be something that um, I was going to pursue. So in vet school, um, we had a, I was lucky enough, University of Florida was one of the only places um, back in the day that had an integrative um, group. And so Dr. Shea at the Chi Institute um, became my teacher early on. I was one of the first classes to graduate from Chi in 2005 and study nice. with him. Yeah. Nice. So it was always destined for me, the path of integrative medicine. Oh, I love that. That is absolutely amazing. That That is incredible. Um, as a professional, like what question do you find yourself answering the most? So I think that um, maybe asked in very different ways, the question that clients come to me the most is how can I be the best pet parent? What can I do better? Um, and that's what I built my practice on is I set my practice up in an area where there was no other holistic doctors and, um, and was there to answer the questions. Um, it's so easy to do better for your pets and to be their advocate. And then you do that. Yeah. And you do that with um, saying no to the commercial diets and creating diets for them at home 
whether they're home cooked or raw depends on the type um, of animal and what we're treating. And we use herbal therapy and, um, and homeopathy. And these are things that don't have that abrasive effect of the on the rest of the body. So these are very gentle modalities. So as I started to work in, in that world and see the massive success with acupuncture, herbal, herbals, homeopathy, it's one of the reasons why I have all those certifications because I kept going back more, learning more, learning more, learning more. And really just as the 20 years um, of me owning Florida Wild just deviated greatly from my education. Um, it's a wonderful foundational education, but it's, it's that steeped in Western pharmaceutical and uh, interventions. Um, and so, yeah, so that was it. So be the guide to the pet owners and, and to gain their trust. And once I gained their trust, then they would say, you know, I, maybe I don't need to reach for the steroids and the antibiotics for allergies, which of course in Florida, we were seeing all the time. Maybe I can reach for other things, or maybe I can spend a little extra time and, and cook for my, my pet. <clears throat> right. right. I love that. Food, the, the whole dog food component is quite interesting. And, um, and of course there's the, I, I'm going to still call it mainstream where they're like, Oh, you, you know, I, I have a Frenchie and um, I just got her a year ago and mm -hmm. um, and I, I and I went into the breed really not knowing much about it. It was just I saw her and I wanted her. And of course, you know, every pet teaches me something new. Um, oh, and absolutely. so she's she's no exception. And so it's just really. And so from having her for a year and cooking for her. Um, and then being on some of these friendship groups where people go, oh, I, uh, you know, the best food, you know, I feed them Purina Pro Plan. And I'm like, why would, like, I didn't spend the amount of money that these people spend on their dogs, but I, I can imagine what they've spent. And I'm like, like, why wouldn't you go into this knowing that and then, you know, wanting to feed your dog the absolute best there is. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's interesting because I think, you know, the, the pet food industry, like the dry kibble, when it first came about, I don't know that it was necessarily that bad. You know, I mean, it was in the 1940s that it came about. So I don't know that it was really that bad because I think our food was a lot cleaner back then. That is certainly true. And, right. you know, I agree with you. It probably wasn't that bad, but there was that, you know, mentality at that time to just throw out your leftovers on the back porch for your dogs right. and your cats to eat. Right. So, yeah, there was a huge shift when big corporations got involved. And then you're exactly right. They started to see the bottom line. They started to see what people would pay for their animals. And then they found a way to decrease the quality of ingredients. So, right. yeah, exactly. So let's, um, you and I chatted briefly before we went on live and I was like, oh, let's talk about f food. And, um, and you said, oh, we could talk about that for the next 12 hours. <laughs> and you're absolutely <laughs> correct because we could talk about um, home cooked versus raw, but um, and there's a, you know, there's different schools of thoughts on that. Like, so how do you, how do you approach the, do I feed cooked or do I feed raw? Well, a lot of that's driven by the pet and a lot of it's driven by the owner. Um, so there are some owners that will look at me and say, no way am I touching, I'm a vegetarian, I'm not touching raw food. And so those are the clients that I may shift more to like a dehydrated raw. Mm. Um, and if it's a little tiny geriatric patient who potentially needs to, to, you know, save as much energy as possible, I'm going to shy away from raw food because we don't want them to have to energetic, energetic cook that food in their bodies. So we're going to give them something easier to process 
Whole Foods, of course, are going to be um, that easy to process, but it's not going to be having to cook it. So every single thing in holistic medicine is patient, individual patient driven. We are not a manufacturer of, you know, CD, which is um, when you have this disease, you treat with this food. We're right. looking individually at the patient. Yeah. Correct. That's awesome. I, I, I love that. And so, because I, I, I think so often people like, I don't know that they understand the components of it. So raw food is really takes a lot more energy for the animal to digest. So is that true? Yeah. So I, I hate to say it that way because it puts a negative light on that. So for instance, you have a boxer that's very young. So young is hot and energy and they're a fire patient, right? They have all this right. excess energy. They come into the exam room, they're bouncing off the walls, they're red, they're red gums, they're red ears. You know, they're predisposed for inflammation and allergies. Yep. That's the kind of pet that's gonna thrive on raw food. They have the energy that, that it takes to, to digest it. Hmm. And I just published um, a article about triglycerides and metabolic syndrome. And so that plays heavily into um, what we wanna feed as well. So sometimes when we're cooking the food, we're oxidizing the meats and the pet can't digest and process that very well. So we can watch over time, their triglycerides will start climbing up. And a simple shift to raw food with those pets will bring their triglyceride levels back down and prevent that pre-cushionoid syndrome, which most pet owners have heard Cushing's in their life. It's so prevalent and it's prevalent because we are hammering our pets with pharmaceuticals. We are hammering them with inappropriate foods and their body cannot process it. And over time, it just tears the body down. Absolutely. And then we give them a chemotherapy like agent to destroy their adrenal glands uh, to treat them. So it, it's a really uh, unfortunate system. Yeah, correct. A absolutely. Absolutely. It is. And I think there's so much, there's so much to the nutrition component that it's mm. just not as, I mean, not something as it's, it's just not black and white. Now with yeah. that on, um, what about cats? Because cats, mm -hmm. like, what about cats? Uh, same thing? Like for me, if I could get every kitten on a raw food diet, that would be oh. my goal. Yeah. That would um, be your goal. Okay. Yeah. I just, you know, the worst possible thing you can do for a cat is feed them dry food. The worst possible thing um, is to give them dry food. Then you have a step better, which is canned food, but that canned food is being leached with chemicals, aluminum potentially affecting the thyroid. So you really need to get them to a whole food um, right. and you can maybe lightly cook it, but the ideal scenario for cats is raw food diet. Is raw food diet. Yeah. And so how, because, you know, touring, I know, I know touring plays such an important role in cats. Like, yeah. so if somebody moves towards a raw food diet, how can they ensure that they're going to get the enough minerals and get those minerals balanced and provide that and those amino acids that the cats need? Yeah, exactly. So my favorite way is to just create a balanced and there are so many balanced raw food diets out there that take that into consideration. When you cook meat or when you process it heavily to make a kibble, you have this massive loss of taurine or massive loss of amino acids. And so that's what we saw with the taurine deficiencies. When you're yep. feeding a raw meat, there's plenty of taurine there. You don't even have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. So what type of, so do you, do you like, so somebody that's listening to this and they go, oh, well, you know, maybe I should start my cat on a raw food. Like yeah. do you, like, where would they, what, where would the starting point be for them? Very carefully. Cats are among the trickiest. And when I sit down with a client and tell them, this is my ideal scenario, we're not going to get there tomorrow. So it's, you know, we're going to take patients, we're going to go very, very slowly. And oftentimes, these are patients that come to us, especially my cats who are obese, they're carbohydrate junkies, um, they've had a pancreas, you know, uh, insulin level shooting up. 
down and spiking throughout their lives. And that's why they tend to be the nibblers that go and get that dry food and come back. Their insulin shooting up, their blood sugar then drops, then they have to go back to, to increase it. So they're addicted to this and it's very difficult, but ah, it's possible. Okay. That's that, you know, we don't talk about cats very much. So this mm -hmm. is, and I've got three of them. So this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. This is great. And, and I don't, I do feed two of them kibble and I feed one of them wet. And so um, I need to chat with you more about the whole thing because I do have one that is fat and yeah. I need to get him to not be fat. And then um, one, one more important word on that is that we're just drilled in as veterinary students to limit protein in cats that develop kidney disease. And it is one of the biggest, most horrific mistakes that veterinarians make with these animals because the whole reason um, or the, the result of kidney disease is that these guys are losing protein in their urine, right? That's one of the ways we diagnose kidney disease. And right. so now we're going to limit the protein in their body as they're losing protein to carnivorous patients. Um, it is the most bananas, like I cannot wrap my brain around it for 20 years. I have fought against this. I have not understood it. There are a ton of holistic veterinarians out there that, that um, are right agreeing with me, but you have got to keep the protein up. That's how they thrive. Yeah, correct. And especially if they're older, older patients, right? Like yeah. as they age, they need more protein. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then when they present with that, then, you know, traditional medicine says, oh, limit the protein because it's hard on the kidneys, but that's, that's Just terrible. And maybe they, maybe they are right in one way. Maybe we should limit their crappy protein that they put in the food. Maybe that should be limited. When we talk about protein, it's not more or less, it's quality of protein, digestibility of protein. That's what's so important. So right. yeah, maybe we should limit their garbage. <laughs> and yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> and so I'm going to, that's going to take me right into what I wanted to touch on. Like we only have like, like 20 minutes left, but yeah. uh, we, I know, um, but that takes me right into, um, and this is where we need more practitioners out there like you and your clinic is keep like you talk about different elements. So you talked about the fire dog that was, you know, the box or the hot. And so our animals present as different elements. And with that comes diets that are best for those different elements. And those are completely individual. So um, can you talk more like in, in a general term? Cause you know, like I know like beef is a neutral and yeah. pork is a neutral. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about like the generalizations of putting the, the different uh, protein sources into like a category? Yeah, I think that's more of an easier way to look at it rather than working with the five element theory. Although we do work with that, but the, the way that we feed and a lot of times the way that we administer herbals is actually looking at the energetics of the patient. So living in Florida, living in Hawaii, we see most of our patients are going to be hot patients. They've got a lot of heat from the environment. And so we're going to use foods to cool them down. If you're living in Michigan, it's cold, it's snowing. Well, maybe your pet it's going to be a lot colder hiding under the covers and needing to get warming foods. So the energetic, every, everything, my, my latest passion is studying energy medicine. It's where we're 100% headed in the future. Yep. And so looking at what energetics, what has, and so food, herbals, even pharmaceuticals, acupuncture, you know, healing touch therapy, every single thing is dealing and moving energy. Yep. or balancing energy. So when you've got a dog, you want one of them things that are cooling. So one of the meats that's very, so maybe you want to shift over to a turkey based diet. Um, if you've got a pet that's neutral and pretty balanced, then you can hit the beef. You can do the balance, the, the beef, then balance. If you've got a pet 
that is super, super, super cold and we want to warm them up, then maybe we're going to go with chicken. So chicken's going to be one of the war most warming foods. We've got lamb. Lamb is another super warming food. And so that's how we then pick. And the vegetables have a category, the carbs have a category, and then we can easily generate a home cooked diet and then potentially add supplements if we need to. So if we're doing it at home, we, we will need to add supplements to try and balance it or there's the balance at website. You can go on as a pet owner yourself, put some ingredients in and they'll work a balance formula for you and to give with their supplement. Um, or you can go to commercial grades. There's, uh, I think Chi has a, or affiliates of Chi has a commercial grade that actually treats based on that cooling and warming energy. And I think right. it's pet, towel pets or pet towel. Yeah. Yep, yep. Is that right? We, yeah. We met them when we were at, um, nice. one of the conferences there. So yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were, it was quite fascinating to, to go, Oh, uh, Oh. And, you know, I think for me, like I, I, I only study nutrition and whatnot as a hobby, weird hobby, but, um, <laughs> but not weird. It's, it's great. <laughs> yeah. It is just one of those things where we think of, and I'm originally from the Midwest, so Wisconsin. And so, you know, in the summertime, we ate chicken because we thought it was cooling and it was a lighter food. And so then you go, oh, it's actually a warming food. And it, you mm -hmm. know, it sort of does, you know, the opposite of what you thought it was doing is actually not a cooling food. There's just like a big, huge red light or light bulb for me to go, oh my gosh, that that's incredible. Um, Cause I know a lot of dog food ha is like chicken based. Um, a lot of cat food is chicken based. And like you that's said, cheap. like we live in Florida or even in the summertime. So can you talk about seasons? You know, Florida doesn't yeah. have change in seasons. We, we do but not that extreme. Hawaii is pretty neutral, right? Yeah. Like you yeah. guys are 12 months out of the year. We're, we're even more neutral than Florida, if you can believe it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You guys are just like perfect mm -hmm. weather all year long. Yeah. Um, and so, but the, the rest of the world is, is not like that. So can you talk about absolutely. like being aware of the different seasons? Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. So um, I think though, even before I say that one aha moment for me in nutrition was when I was at the Chi University listening to a food lecture. Um, and once again, you know, I got out of vet school and I was already working towards this and making my clients feed whole food. And I would get the question all the time from other veterinarians is how are you okay with that? It's not perfectly balanced, you know? And so I would say, well, I see my patients. I feel my patients. They're doing great. They're thriving. So we must right. be doing something right. So when she said this um, in a lecture, it was just this beautiful, simplistic aha moment, which was, do you balance your kid's diet at every single meal? And the answer is no, right? we don't. But what we do is we rotate their foods constantly. So that we are ensuring that they're getting amino acids that they need, vitamins and minerals that they need. And we're not giving them the same food over and over and over. And we don't even know what they're able to absorb from that diet. So even more importantly than seasonal, which is kind of crazy for me to say, because it is very important to balance your pet and, and maintain that balance is a rotational diet. So we take these animals, we put them on a, a, a one food. We don't change it. Why? Because my veterinarian told me not to change it. We can upset their belly. So now we've trained their body. We've totally shifted their microbiome and their microbiome is acceptant of that one food. So now you get a holistic veterinarian like me saying, cook for your animal, change their diet. And they're going to get an upset belly because now we're going to greatly shift their microbiome. Because if you're feeding a high carbohydrate, carbohydrate yeah. diet, your lactobacillus load in your gut is enormous because the lactobacillus feed off carbohydrates. Okay. I'm sorry. That was a total deviation no, from the question. No, oh gosh, please don't apologize. But Keep going. This is, very just so, this is so fascinating. I absolutely love it. 
awesome. It's very important. So we can most certainly work to balance energetically. But my biggest goal when a puppy comes in, I'm so excited when I see a puppy. I'm like, oh my goodness, we have a fresh slate. We can do everything that we want to. We're going to minimize the vaccines. We're going to be smart vaccinated. We're going to tighter them. We're going to limit their drug intake. And we're going to feed them in a rotational base. What does that get you? What it gets you is a dog with a healthy microbiome. The microbiome is mimicked in the brain, right? The brain has a microbiome that matches what's in the gut. So now we have a healthy, mentally healthy pet and a very healthy immune system. So there you go. I, I love that. I love that. That that is amazing. So and and you are correct. I mean, we've had dogs forever. And you know, the when we've encountered issues, you know, the vets are like, don't change the mood. Like they really just try to almost scare people into not changing it up. And so you sort of get into that mindset. And then when you start looking outside the box because you're wanting, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but I sort of want my animals to live as long as I do. I mean, I've been around forever. Um, Absolutely. And so, um, you know, you start going, how can I do better for my animals? And I think for me, one of the biggest uh ahas, this is going to be a little bit of a going down a a dark road, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring it up because you have something on your website that, that highlights it. Um, And it's, and it's the amount of, so we've got horses as well, and we've had horses pass away, and we've had to have horses euthanized. And state of Florida does not allow you to bury your horses in your backyard. So they have to be removed from the property. And um, I know that they're going to the rendering plant. That's where they go. Sorry. I know. And here, and, and so like my one horse that we just lost, um, he was a gray skinned and we got him, you know, when he was 18 and he had melanomas throughout his body. Yeah. And, and, you know, we did what we could, um, to save him and it just didn't work. And so he crossed over and he went to the rendering plant. And so for me, and this was several years ago when we had lost another one, when we had to have her euthanized, I went, oh my God, oh my God, all of all my horse, this horse that we pumped full of drugs to try to help or pump, you know, like, one was a colic situation. So, um, you know, after we couldn't get it taken care of here, you know, she went to the clinic. So they do whatever they can. And that involves drugs. And then she had to get euthanized. And I'm like, all of that, all of that is going into our pet food. A- absolutely. And what's even crazier is that not only does the FDA Um, know about it, the FDA has set legal limits of how much pentobarbital can be in pet food. Now that is just insane that that is acceptable. Right. And I read their article, you posted a link to the article from the FDA, and they talked about the results of the study and that the, um, the liver weights were heavier and, but, but there was no um, detectable change in the liver function and liver enzymes. Mm. (laughs) And I was like, okay, but that's not the only thing that the liver does. (laughs) hundred percent. And once again, we're, we're in this destruction mindset, right? We're in a mindset of taking each individual organ, separating it from the whole and looking at it. And this is how we're taught in vet school. And it's not the way the body works. We are a holistic being and one thing affects another. So you're telling me you're just looking at the liver. Well, no. yeah, just no, it's unacceptable. Right. Correct. Correct. 
Correct. And I and I and I bring that up because I it that really hit home for me as a pet owner and went I need to have the awareness of I would never eat that. I would never knowingly Absolutely. I would never so then why would I feed it to my animals and then scratch my head and go, gosh, I'm wondering why we're seeing such a huge uh, uptick in cancer and Absolutely. In- chronic disease, inflammation, chronic- everything is inflammation, inflammation is chronic disease, inflammation is cancer, everything's inflammation, the body doesn't know what to do, the body yeah. is screaming for help, I am detoxing these chemicals, I am detoxing your yard pesticides, I am detoxing the environmental toxins that you put out there, I am literally detoxing and our animals are just, just like us, screaming for help. Screaming for help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, This has been great. Oh my God. I love it. I don't want it to end. Um, (laughs) Thank you. Thank you um, so much. If you could have, if you could give our listeners like a couple things like that would drastically change the health of their pet um, without a lot I'm not I'm gonna say a lot of effort because since I've been cooking for my dogs I don't like once you have it down like it's It's actually quite it's easy it's easy it doesn't take any more time yep absolutely and the thing that you're doing too and you're cooking for your animal you're preparing your food is you're making a heart-to-heart connection and so you're you're not throwing food in an automatic feeder that is garbage you are lovingly preparing food and you are lovingly administering it and anybody who's owned a pet knows that they 100 percent pick up that energy of love and they thrive on it now, the one thing i'm going to tell pet owners is and it's just one thing and it really is don't be afraid to say no or question your mainstream veterinarian you can do better they can learn Potentially, it's not their fault. They have taught a certain way. And there's some that are very strictly Western and that's what they want to do. And it just might not be the right bet for you. You need to find somebody who's willing to learn and willing to accept that you don't need to get that vaccine because there is going to be no way that they're going to come in contact with that disease. And they need to be open to how you want to feed and need to feed responsibly. So get together with the veterinarian that can help you do those things. I, lo- I love that. I love that. I I know we could go on talking about more <laughs> stuff, but we, we've sort of like covered a lot of topics in a short period of time. Yep. And I think it was really, really great. So um, if people would like more information, um, where can they find more information? Yeah, you can check out my website. Um, I'm at www.bodyinbalance.com for animals.com. Um, I do see a limited number of patients, but I am, I'm here to help you navigate the holistic world. Um, you do not have to live in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. I, I was thinking of a reason that I could come to Hawaii. I was going to bring my little dog with me. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Come on. It's fun. It's amazing. It's, I'm working yeah. on, um, I'm working on actually a retreat for pet owners, um, to oh. come to me and learn about stick feeding herbal therapy and energy work. And so that is a passion project that hopefully I'm going to roll out in 2024, 2025. Ah, I love so it. There is a please, reason to come to Hawaii. Please keep us posted on that retreat. That would be absolutely incredible. And if you feel the need to come to Florida and have somebody host it for you in Florida, um, we would love to host you for that. That would be awesome. All right. Um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our our chat today with Dr. Erin Holder. She is just incredible. I know why Jesus <laughs> loves you. Um, and um, please seriously consider some of the things that we talked about. And don't get overwhelmed by it because it can get overwhelming if you feel like you can't do anything until you understand it all. If you wait till you understand the whole picture, it's never going to happen. So 20 years passed. (laughs) 20 years has passed. Exactly. So reach out to a holistic practitioner, 
Um, I know Dr. Shea's graduates are all trained in, not all of them are trained in the food therapy, but find the ones that are trained in the food therapy. It is an absolutely amazing topic. Um, and it'll be life-changing for you and your pets because keeping a pet healthy is way easier than trying to fix a pet That's right. and try, trying to get them back into balance. That so, is so true. Um, so thank you so much, Dr. Aaron. I sure loved having you and You're we'll welcome. see everybody soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.